raised in that story technology is being used to keep tabs on political rivals but it isn't being deployed in the manner that it should against terrorism that's the center stage face off for tonight joining us on the show major general vk singh former joint secretary of the research and analysis wing b raman has stayed on with us we've got chandan mitra leader of the bjp mj akbar is with us and harinder baveja as well she's broken that story so my first question to her it's very important what you're revealing what you're saying is in kishan ji's case there were details that were available if the phone tapping technology that we're all talking about now had been deployed at the right time at the right place 2611 could have been prevented the delhi blast could have been prevented and kishan ji could have been arrested yes rahul i am saying that in fact at the very time that uh, the intelligence agencies were monitoring prakash karat's phone the blast in delhi was being plotted but we got you know uh, intercepts on what Karat was doing, but we got no advance information on the Delhi blast. And by the way, 30 people were killed in that blast in Delhi, and about 100 were injured. Now, coming to 2611, there is a very damning note. In fact, the JNK police, in a brilliant covert operation, had infiltrated the ranks of the Lashkar e Taiba who wanted SIM cards from India. We actually bought 33 SIM cards from Delhi and Calcutta and passed it on to the Lashkar e Taiba. The JNK police wrote to the IB saying these SIM cards need to be monitored because they are going to come back into the country and come back they did and guess where? These were the very numbers being used by Ajmal Kasab and company in 2611 and we had not put them on our monitoring That's system. a very, very important disclosure we are making on the show tonight that the numbers that were used by the terrorists during the Mumbai attacks were numbers that our police agencies in Jammu and Kashmir had offered to the intelligence bureau asking them to tap these numbers. Those numbers, Harinder, you are saying, were not tapped, which is how these they people got monitored. in. And if they had been tapped on time, then Mumbai 2611 could have been prevented. Well, we would have certainly known that Ajmal Kasab and company have arrived at the time that they did on 2611. In fact, this note was sent to the IB at least 10 days before 2611 Rahul. And all of 2611 as the attack was happening through the VRs of the night, we still didn't put them under the monitor. And post midnight, somebody in the intelligence agencies woke up to the fact that there were, you know, this lengthy list of numbers. Uh, a lot of them from Calcutta, then the service provider in Calcutta was alerted and in fact it's because these numbers were then monitored Rahul that we were able to uh, tape the conversation between the terrorists and their handlers sitting in Pakistan. Okay. That's how the, the, General tape, the Singh, taping started. How do you respond to this? The assertion that's being made is that technology which is available is being used to keep tabs on political rivals and not being deployed as effectively as it should to prevent terror attacks from taking place. Uh, no, you see, actually there, there are two different things. Uh, if, they, if they want to uh, keep a tab uh, on their political opponents, they can do so. But that doesn't prevent them from using it for the purpose for which is meant. That means keeping a tab on terrorists. And if what she says is right, that they had the numbers and they were still not able to monitor it, then it's a serious lapse. Be, be Raman, we have the technology. Be Raman, I want you to respond to this. The, in, the disclosure that we're making is that there were numbers, a list of 30 numbers supplied by the Jammu and Kashmir police to the intelligence bureau asking them to put them on tab immediately. It was amongst those numbers that Kasab used that phone, which is the one that he brought in. If those numbers had been tabbed, then we would have known in advance that these terrorists were coming. Do you believe that our intelligence agencies sometimes get their priorities wrong when they are made to put more emphasis on political rivals rather than terrorists? No, if they had known the numbers, they, they had a list of suspect numbers in Pakistan, which are being used by ISI officers or Lashkar-e operatives, etc. Yes, it, uh, one would agree that uh, they should have kept those numbers under watch. They should have monitored them with whatever equipment they have, and they have good equipment, etc. That's definitely the um, uh, mission on, on their part, which needs to be gone into. Yeah. But I do not agree that it's because they are concentrating on collection of political intelligence, etc. 
Today, the, the kind of equipment, the kind of technology which is available, one can record thousands and thousands and thousands of videos. It's not like the days when I was in the service where you went to record two or three conversations, one had to record a lot of manpower, record a lot of equipment, etc. Today, it's, the machine is possible to record everything that has been happening. So some of these intercepts of political conversations which have appeared and all, I do not think they are the result of a conscious tapping. They are the result of all the time when you are doing a check with a modern technology, lots of other conversations which are of innocent nature, they are also get recorded. And uh, this is this is one of those accidental recording of conversations. So it does not, yes, political interception goes on. No, no, you are saying it is an accidental watch, recording of conversation. MJ Akbar denies and disagrees vehemently with you. He wants to come in over. Yes, yes. I mean, th this is, I think, I am sorry to say this and I do not mean this personally, but th this is a shocking story. Not because, you know, that there was a failure at one end. You are saying, Arinder, that in the middle of the operation, somebody realized, right? Now tell me, how many years have passed? Nearly two years, right? Year and a half, yes. What I want to know, has a single police officer been held accountable? Intelligence officer? No, that's the that's point. That's it. That's it. There is a second MJ. layer. That's, you can take Shivraj Patil's job because he's a public And the PSA. Maharashtra Chief Minister. And you can take the Maharashtra Chief Minister's job. But nobody within the service yes. is it's ever held accountable. held accountable. And that is Absolutely. why they protect each other. It is a complete, you know, protection system which helps. And even today, you've done this story. I want to know what the government is. The same government. It is absolutely the same government. So what exactly they have done about the police officers? I, I want to take our viewers okay. once well, again through the officers. note that Headlines uh, Today now has access to. Take a very careful look at the note that's coming up on your screen. Look very carefully on the dates that are coming up on your screen as well. It's U O number four seven three seven four. It's information about overground workers. Uh, who've been sent through Pakistan trained militants based in Kashmir to POK. These numbers are likely to emerge in other parts of the country. These numbers need to be monitored and the information taken from these numbers regarding the contents of the conversations, current locations of the CDRs are required by us for further developing the information. The monitoring is possible at Kolkata. This is information sent by the Jammu and Kashmir police to the intelligence bureau. It's dated the 21st day uh, of the of 2008 in November, just before the 26-11 yeah. attacks took place. And I want to put this question to Chandan Mitra because this is not something which just the UPA government is responsible for. The NDA is as much to blame because technology is being used and so much emphasis is being laid on political tapping that it's not really being deployed, Mr. Mitra, as effectively as it should be against terrorists. Well, Rahul, first let me tell you that uh, because of the thunderstorm outside, I am hearing things in a very patchy way. Uh, I don't know how much you are getting of uh, what I am saying. But I think the principal point that uh, is, comes out very clearly is that the government uh, has been trying to cover up. It is very clear now that information was available, but it's typical kind of callousness, laxity, multiplicity of agencies, ego problems that prevented the government from working on a tip-off uh, which could have possibly prevented 26-11. This is a shameful and shocking kind of development and revelation that has come. But I think that what's a bigger question is that I don't think the technology is an issue. Technology is there and we have been reading about the misuse of that technology. When technology is deployed to eavesdrop on politicians, both of the ruling party as well as the opposition, I mean the government guns for uh, political people and prepare dossiers to blackmail them and that is the priority rather than national security. I really don't know what to say. Okay. I think the government owes a great deal of explanation and which has not been forthcoming. You are saying the Congress government has its priorities all wrong. Abhishek Manu Singhvi of the Congress now joins us. Dr. Singhvi, before I put the question to you and before you tell me that you didn't hear the story so far, let me play out once. For your benefit, sir, the report that Headlines Today now has access to, it was sent just a few days before 26-11 took place. It's a report from the Jammu and Kashmir Police to the Intelligence Bureau. It says that 
this is a report in which the Jammu and Kashmir police says that we've given 30, we've planted 30 numbers to terrorists who are currently in Pakistan occupied Kashmir. These numbers are likely to emerge in other parts of India from now. These numbers need to be monitored. I'm reading from the report and the information taken from these numbers regarding the contents of the conversations, current locations of these people are required by us for further investigations. It's sent just five days before terrorists entered Mumbai. The question we're asking tonight, sir, is that does the UPA government has misplaced priorities when it comes to tapping uh, and using the new technology available? You are using it to tap into political rivals, but not as effectively as you should against terrorists. Dr. Singhvi. Yes. Can you hear me, Dr. Singhvi? If you want me to answer, you must understand that I have, yes, yes, I have heard this from you for the first time five seconds ago. If you had told me earlier, we would have tried to find information. I think you can ask this question of the government straight away. There will be an explanation. I can't give an off-the-cuff explanation because I have no idea what you are talking about. I can say only two things. Hello? Can you hear me? Go on. Yes, we can hear you, sir. Go Hello? on. Go on. Yes, we can hear you, sir. Hello? Yes, Dr. Singhvi, we can yes. hear you. Go on. Uh, I want to say only two or three things. Uh, I want to say this. Yes, firstly, what I want to say is, firstly, uh, the government has categorically told you and the nation on pain of parliamentary action on privileges that there is, they don't indulge in any tapping or interception. Now, as far as that is concerned, your basic premise has been refuted less than 24 hours ago by the Home Minister. And please don't premise your story or your statement by starting by saying you do eavesdrop on political leaders, but you don't eavesdrop on terrorists. So the first premise is wrong. Number two, and let me add that as far as your eavesdropping story, or not yours, but the outlook story on uh, uh, political leaders is concerned, there are very serious inherent contradictions which belie the authenticity of the facts in that story. Mr. Digvijay Singh on two counts. One, the machine was located to be in Jammu and Kashmir, nowhere in Delhi. I don't understand how Mr. Digvijay Singh could be taped on that day. Number two, there is no reference of any kind, any event happening near or later of the seed of these elections. So there is an inherent contradiction there. As far as the allegation is concerned that we don't use uh, 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 authorities or, or technology to intercept terrorism, I think that's a very, very casual and a somewhat irresponsible statement. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's a statement that suggests that we don't take national security seriously. I think no government worth the salt, least of all a Manmohan Singh, Congress-led UPA government, would uh, can, can be subject to such a sweeping accusation. Okay. I think you know the record for the last one year, one and a half years. You know the steps being taken on terrorism. I think therefore you should be a little restrained and balanced. Before just just give me a moment, Harinder Baveja yes. has done this if story, she has back, a couple of questions I'm for you. I am being very receptive and constructive. Mr. Please, 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 I'd like right to ask you a question if you don't have... One minute, the right way to do the program would be supply these facts first to the government, get their response and then do the program. Supply them, answer Singhi. the response and then do the program. We don't have any facts here today from the government side. Mr. Singhvi, we are talking about a story, this is regarding the SIM cards which were given to the Lashkar-e Taiba by the JNK police in a covert operation and the information was shared with the intelligence agencies. They were told to monitor these numbers because they are bound to come back into the country and they did come back with Kasab and company and they were used in 2611 but the numbers were not monitored clearly. Don't you think that's like a serious lapse? Instead we are spending time you know sweeping political conversations. Not in the Not in the, not in the least because I do not accept either the facts or the inference from the facts. I'll tell you why. Can you, you have to, to get a larger us, picture from the government by disclosing the this first to the government and giving them 48 hours to come back with a fact. Who's? Can you tell us why the say? numbers which there were given to the Lashkar e Taiba were not monitored? Could be part of a national security exercise? No. Yes, yes, I could tell you if you had the decency to give me these facts one hour, five hours ago, I would have checked up. You can't corner it like this on a program for the first time. How do I respond to this? Okay. Obviously, the object is to sensationalize. It is not to get the answer. I can guarantee you there will be an answer. If you check up with the government and give them 24 hours, there will be an answer. But you have not checked with the Home Ministry. 
you can't cross examine me on television like this without disclosing facts earlier okay general singh the government insists that it's got its priorities right you worked inside the establishment can you tell our audience the truth can you would you like to use this opportunity to tell the viewers what the truth really is uh, well um, let me tell you one thing firstly the intelligence agencies often function on their own they you know i mean uh, I, I sometimes used to call them misguided missiles they do think sometimes without uh, taking approval or without the knowledge of the political masters in this case also it is quite possible what the home minister said that there is no record it is quite possible they have done it without his knowledge and in any case this uh, statement that there is no record even if they have done the monitoring which it appears they have done it because outlook uh, won't do a story otherwise both may be right they they have done it and there is no record because it is being done over the air now over the air monitoring Aren't with the, with the new technology because you know they want to please their political Absolutely. masters well, and they are encouraged to do that yes, that, that, that is very let's, true let's say that the, uh, um, uh, mr mk dharan his book has brought out these instances when they were monitoring even the president's calls so they do it yani zel singh yes yani zel singh's call okay chandan yes, mitra <laughs> the government is saying the manmohan singh government does not do it we've categorically denied the fact that we were tapping our political masters and as general singh says on the show sometimes the intelligence agencies tap it on their own they might be encouraged to keep tabs on their political masters but they do it on their own he calls them unguided missiles therefore it's unfair to blame the upa government for what's happened Chandan can you hear me Okay let me put that question to B Raman till then Mr Raman you also worked in rod you share general singh's assessment that they work as unguided missiles and therefore it's not completely fair to blame the ministers to blame manmohan singh's government because as chidambaram has said in the house the government did not authorize it Well, there are always any institution, and this includes intelligence agencies also. There are people who tend to operate uh, on their own, uh, rogue, rogue elements. There are ele elements everywhere, and uh, if there are elements in certain intelligence organisations, even the R N A W, I wouldn't be surprised. It happens all the time. It's not or something which has been happening. Now it has happened in the past and all, and where it was found, that uh, it was under detected action has been taken. It, it is there. But systematically doing the kind of thing which has been alleged in this newspaper report and magazine report, more using equipment, using modern technology for the purpose of recording conversations of political leaders, etc. I, 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 I'm rather skeptic about it because I'm telling on the basis of the contents of the interviews as they were produced. I'm telling it on the basis of the number of the nature of persons. Or for example, if the UPA government was doing it. They would have done it with their op opponents. The, 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 the people whose messages, so-called messages, have been produced, they are not the real opponents. So these are all very, very, very sweeping allegations on the basis of two or three so-called messages. It's in fact everybody. And okay, it only, uh, you're this saying these are sweeping this allegations this based on little fact. General Singh is saying intelligence agencies. He's worked in one. Act as unguided missiles. They could do this. Without necessarily being told to do so by their political masters, Mr. Uh, okay, let me ask Chandan Mitra whether he agrees because Abhishek Manu Singh is saying very categorically that you are blaming the government. We've come out on record and say we did not authorize it. You are making sweeping allegations that cannot be proven. Frankly, Rahul, I have not been able to hear Dr. Singhvi properly because of all this disturbance. Uh, so, if uh, Dr. Singhvi is giving the assurance that the government is going to examine the whole matter. And place the facts before the nation. Uh, I think uh, we should accept that uh, commitment at face value. But the problem often is that the government uh, tends to cover up things. And when with a charge as serious as this, I think the tendency to kind of um, give all kinds of explanations and uh, prevent heads from rolling is also going to be uh, very very tempting. So I hope uh, that the government does conduct a thorough inquiry. And comes and tells people whether or not it was true that the numbers were given to the intelligence agencies, and the numbers were supposed to be tracked. The numbers were not tracked, and these people came into Bombay, uh, Mumbai on 26/11, and uh, carried out the carnage.
See, the government's record on national security does not evoke confidence. We've had so many major incidents, the Bombay train blast, the whole series of blasts in various cities. So on, on the basis of that, there is good reason to doubt the government's veracity, doubt the government's claims. And therefore, I hope this time the government has turned a new leaf and will reveal all that ought to be re revealed in the national interest. No, I don't think I don't think there's going much chance of any new leaf or old leaf. But uh, there is an oxymoron, you know, operating in our discussion. Everybody who is in the cabinet or an even senior knows that ordering a tap on a politician is illegal. So nobody is going to give a written order. All orders are going to be implicit. And this is where the psychopancy factor, this is where the desire for promotions, this is, yes. do, you, do you see what I am saying? Yes. Nobody, so where, where, is, where is the government going to say that there is going to record, there is no record of it. Record. And therefore, the whole issue is that whether the government is doing something illegal by encouraging its agencies. I mean, if you go into political reasons, look at the tap on Prakash Karat. Prakash Karat is clearly not tapped. I'm, assu I'm assuming, as long as he was the you know, left hand and right hand of government, the government was resting on his crutches. But the moment Prakash Karat turns against the government on the nuclear deal, then his phone becomes worthy, reaches the exalted heights of being tapped. Certainly, the timing is very crucial and yeah. interesting. Yes, yes. And, I, and you know, if you want to examine, I'm just uh, making uh, as a political observer, if you, even Digvijay Singh, just look at Madhya Pradesh politics. Find out who were the ministers. And then you will actually get a little closer to what I assume is going to be the real truth. Because the point being made in the story that we've broken mm -hmm. is at the time when Prakash Karat's phone was being tapped, that's the time the Delhi blast was being plotted. And if, if this eagle technology had been deployed at the right place for the right function, the blast might not have taken place and this especially in the case of the 2611 story we had information coming in from the Jammu and Kashmir police that these are 30 numbers we have planted keep tabs on them they didn't have the technical wherewithal to do it they didn't have the bandwidth what is the reason they are giving that's the point that Abhishek Manu Singh we no, makes the is there a reason why it didn't happen they'll say we had too many numbers to tap into no 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 they just slept on the information level JNK police cars cannot tap in in West Bengal right only the central intelligence agency can do do that now obviously the intelligence agencies are not doing their basic job I mean how can you not monitor numbers that have been passed on planted. to the national Taiwa yes and when you've been told that they have been planted you know okay in a very uh, in a, in a great yeah, yeah. these are very very yeah. important questions that are being raised questions that need to be answered if that information was available if those are the numbers that Kasab and company were using and we had the list of numbers days before 2611 happened why is it that the intelligence bureau and the NTR and all the other organizations that are supposed to be hyperactive when it comes to these matters why did they sleep over it why did they sleep in Islamabad while Madhuri Gupta is happily sending information to the Pakistan intelligence bureau this is information that needs to be analyzed lessons need to be learned well I'm told by my producers that there's a hailstorm in Delhi outside which is why there's a problem with Chandan's audio line uh, but the climate, the weather might cool down, but the political temperature definitely won't. Abhishek Manu Singh, we says, let the government respond to the story. We definitely will get a response from the government. For the moment, Chandan Mitra, Abhishek Manu Singh, we, uh, MJ Akbar, General VK Singh and B. Raman, thank you very much for joining us on the center stage face-off for tonight. That's all we have time for. I now take you over to Parina and Denzil, who will take you through Action Station. What do you have for us, Denzil, tonight?